Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about probably the most exciting new feature in the new version of After Effects, and that is the integration of Cinema 4D with After Effects. Not only is it integrated, but they actually have included a light version of Cinema 4D with your After Effects download. That's right. Anyone who owns After Effects will now own a light copy of Cinema 4D. So let me just show you how this works. I have this scene and basically I just did a 3D track on it with the 3D camera tracker in After Effects. Now one important step which I went over in the video on the 3D ground plane and origin that we did was selecting the points I wanted to be my origin, right clicking and hit set ground plane and origin. And what that did was set the coordinates at that point to 0, 0, 0. And that's really important because a 3D application will use 0, 0, 0 as its main coordinate points. So I could shut off this text and let's say I want to add 3D text or a 3D object to my scene. Before I do that, I'm just going to make a new null object. And I'm going to make it a 3D layer and then I'm going to shift parent it to my text object to move it to the same position as that text object. I'll show you why I did that in a second, but in the meantime, I'm just going to go into my project panel, select my composition, and go to File, Export, Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. And this is now included with After Effects. So if I select where I want to export it to, I'll just call this text.c4d and hit Save. And then I could just go into Finder and drag that .c4d project right into my scene. So first of all, you'll notice that I can drag a C4D project into my scene. And I'm going to show you how this works in a second. But for now, I'm just going to click on it and go to Edit, Edit Original, which is the same as hitting Command E. And if I hit Play down here, you'll see I have my camera in my scene. So if I go to what was brought into Cinema 4D, you'll notice I have my camera and I have my null object. Okay, so if I shut off the camera by clicking this button, and I zoom out, you can see there's my null object. I'm going to turn the camera back on for now. And I'm just going to make a new object. So I could go in here and click and make a cube. And I want to bring it in right at around the ground plane there. So I'm going to go to right when it starts to intersect the floor, right around there. And I'm just going to hit save. So I'm going to go back to After Effects and just drag this text.c4d right into my project. And you'll notice if I start to preview it, I get that object right in my scene and I didn't have to render anything, it's just live interacting with my scene. So you'll notice it's kind of a low quality and that's because if I click on my text.c4d layer, you'll see it brought in this new Cineware effect. It says Cineware by Maxon and basically it gives you a bunch of options relating to your Cinema 4D scene. So right now the render is set to software, but I could also change that to standard draft and you'll notice my ground plane disappears then. Or I could change it to standard final, which is basically exactly the same render that I would get out of Cinema 4D. I'm just gonna shut the null off for now so you don't have to see it. And then I could just start rendering my scene. And of course, there's my object integrated right into the scene. So let's say I wanna do text. Of course, I could do that as well. So I'll just tab back on over to Cinema 4D Lite. I'm just going to delete my cube by clicking on it and hitting the delete key. And then I could come over here to my splines, hold it down, and I'm going to change it from a spline to a text object. And then I could start typing whatever I want. So I'll just leave it text for now. And then I'm going to click over here and make an extrude nerves. And then I'll just drag my text into that extrude nerves object. So obviously I'm not going to go through all of the details of how to use Cinema 4D right now but you could start to see it's pretty simple to start doing simple things. So I'll come in here and I'll select the extrude nerves and I'll change the movement from 20 to 50, which will just make my text object deeper. Again, I'll just hit save, go back to After Effects, and now I have text in there. So you can see it's integrating with my scene and again, I have this at final render quality. So without ever rendering anything out of Cinema 4D, I have this object right in my scene. I could also start tweaking things about my cinema scene. So I could come to the extrude nerves and I could add some caps to my text just to smooth out the edges. So I'll change the start cap to a fillet cap, change the steps to three, and I'll change the radius to three as well. And you'll see it just sort of rounded out my edges. Of course, I could then start making materials. So I could click here in my materials editor 
and start setting up a new material. I can change the color. And then I can add things like reflection. So if I go over here to basic, I could turn up the reflection amount. And I'm just going to go over to that, turn that down to about 10%. Now, obviously, I don't have anything else in my scene right now. It's, it's not going to actually interact with my background, but I could do things like setting up an environment sphere so that it was actually reflecting what was in my After Effects scene. We're not going to get that in detail here. Of course, I should apply my material to my text. I'm just going to drag that onto the text, hit Save, come back over to After Effects, and now I have my text. So just to make it a little clearer, I'm going to click on T to get the scale options and then just drag my text up so it's a little bigger. Obviously, it'll be a little bit bigger than the ledge it's sitting on, but maybe I could rotate it. So I hit R on the keyboard, start rotating it, and let's just hit Save and see what that looks like. So now I have my text. And there it is integrated with my scene. Obviously, I could take this a lot further and start doing things like shadowing. But this is just a simple explanation of the effect. Now, to go into some of the options I have in the effect, I can even do things like multipass compositing. So if I click on this checkbox, I could go to Cinema 4D Multipass, check that, and then I could just click on Add Image Layers. And you'll see it added the atmosphere, the refraction, ambient occlusion, all these things that you would render out of a 3D program I have right here. So obviously you'll see that I have a ton of options here. I'm just going to delete all these multi-pass layers and turn on the main layer again. So now if I want to do some more detailed things, I could come back over to Cinema 4D Light. I could of course add things like lights and I'll just add one here, drag it in, drag it out over there so we can see the front of our text. And now that's in the scene. And of course, I could even get into setting my multi-pass in Cinema 4D. So I could come in here and go to my Extrude Nerbs, add a Cinema 4D tag, compositing. And I could set up an object buffer for this. And what an object buffer is, for those of you who don't know, is basically a way to separate your objects into different layers. So let's say I add something like a cone here. I'll put that up here. I can take my extrude nerves, which is my text, and put that on object buffer one. Then I could just control drag that object buffer to my cone, and now click on that one, and put that on object buffer two. Then of course I could come into my settings here, and click on multipass object buffer, and add one for object buffer one. And I'll do the same thing again, multipass object buffer, and do one for object buffer 2. Turn on multipass. And now if I just come back over to After Effects, and now I can just check this checkbox that says Defined Multipass. And that basically lets you take the object buffers you already set up in Cinema 4D and use those. And then I could click on Add Image Layers, and you'll notice I have an object buffer for each one of my layers. So here is one for object buffer 1, and here's one for object buffer 2. Then if I turn my main pass back on, it's both objects. And of course, I could then start doing things like using these as luminance mats for those layers. So if I take this one, set it up as a luma mat, you'll see I only have that one object. So if I unsolo that and I shut off my other object buffer, you'll see I have just the cone. Then if I duplicate that layer and I use the other object buffer, now you'll see I have my text. So that's giving me separate layers right here in After Effects. And of course, I can change them on the fly. Of course, there are other options as well. You can extract things from your Cinema 4D scene. So if I click on that, I can get the camera from the Cinema 4D scene and the light. Of course, I already had that camera in here, so I'm just gonna undo that. And you can imagine how this workflow can get really, really deep. Now, one thing I will say is if you have a super render intensive scene, you may not wanna render your final scene through this direct relationship. And the reason for that is because each time you change something in your comp, you'll have to re-render your cinema scene. So if you have a full version of cinema, you could just render out passes and bring those in just like you did before. If not, you could always pre-render these layers so things process a little quicker. But of course, if you're going to change your comp camera or things like that, then you'll have to keep this live link. 
And just to show you some more options there, you can change your camera from Cinema 4D camera to your After Effects comp camera or your centered comp camera to change the two world spaces to match each other. So again, this is really full featured and I think it is a first step between the two companies because there's certainly more things that I'd like to be able to do, but it's a great first start to be able to get some real 3D and After Effects.